Ladies and gentlemen, today I've got for you the ultimate guide to how to tie a necktie. Rule number one, choose the right collar type. Point collar. The point collar is best paired with a slim tie that has a smaller knot. A wide tie and a large knot would easily overwhelm this collar type and mess up the proportions. Two, spread collar. This collar you can experiment with, but it will look best with a medium width tie and knot. Number three, widespread collar. This type of collar is going to stand out due to its width, so you should put it in check with a wider tie and larger knot. Smaller knots and skinny neckties, they'll just get lost in this collar style and look out of place. Rule number two, get the right lapel size. The width of your tie should closely match the width of your suit's lapel. The wider the lapel, the wider the tie needs to be. A good way to check this is by putting the end of your tie on top of the lapel and seeing if they match up closely. If the tie is too thin, it may make your lapel look larger than it actually is, ruining the proportions. If it's too wide, well, it'll just look ridiculous. Proportions are key. Rule number three, you want contrast between your shirt and tie. Make sure that your tie isn't too similar in color to the shade of your shirt. Otherwise, your tie won't stand out on its own. A lighter shirt with a dark necktie is my go-to combination and I find it to be the most stylish as it has the perfect amount of contrast. Now, what about dark colored shirts with light colored ties? You can pull this look off, but it's very casual. This is not a dressed up look. Rule number four, don't exactly match your pocket square and tie. You may have heard that you should match your pocket square and your tie. This is actually incorrect. Although many stores sell them as a pack, you don't want to actually wear them like that. The pocket square itself was meant to be a standalone accessory. Use a pocket square with a different color or pattern than your tie, and this looks so much better than a pocket square and necktie that match exactly. And if all else fails, go with a simple white pocket square in a presidential fold. This will work with any necktie and is really a simple go-to look. Now let's transition and talk about the basic four necktie knots that you need to know. First up, we've got the four in hand. This knot is perfect for pointed collars and smaller lapels. To tie it, first make sure the wide end is longer than the narrow end. The length will depend on the tie itself. Take the wide end and cross it over the narrow end and then bring it under and behind. Wrap it around and across the front again, creating a loop. Then bring it up through the neck opening. Now pull the wide end through the loop, create it at the front, but don't squeeze it. Now you want your tie to have a dimple as it looks much better than the tie just laying flat. There are two ways to create a dimple. First, use three fingers to squeeze the fabric on top together. Then gently pull with your other hand from the bottom down until it's tight. Another way is to pinch the knot from the sides with two fingers. Now use the other hand and with three fingers placed on each side and the middle of the tie, gently pull down until it's tight. Now that you have the dimple, you can finish tying the knot by holding the narrow end and pushing the knot upwards to your neck. Keep the narrow end secure by using the keep loop on the back of the wider end. Remember, the tie should end around the middle of your belt line. If you find it to be too short, start over and shorten the narrow end. If it's too long, then make sure the wide end is short. Nicely done. Next up, we've got the half Windsor. This knot is incredibly versatile and works great with all colors and lapel sizes. To tie it, first make sure the wide end is longer than the narrow end. Cross the wide end over the narrow end and bring it under and behind. Now take the wide end and push it through the neck opening. Once it's through, take the wide end and pull it across the front of the knot and bring it under and through the neck opening again. Pull the wide end through the loop created at the front. Now add the dimple. Hold the narrow end and push your necktie by the knot up to your neck. Insert the narrow end into the keeper and you're done. If it lands on the middle of your belt line, you nailed it. Next up, the full Windsor. This is a large knot, perfectly suited for wider collars and wide lapels. Start by making sure the wide end is much longer than the narrow end. Now cross the wide end over the narrow end. Bring the wide end under and through the neck opening. Once you do that, take the wide end behind the narrow end and bring it over and through the neck opening once again. At this
this point, you should notice the symmetry of the knot. Now wrap the wide end across the front, then go under and through the neck opening from behind one final time. Finish off by pulling the wide end through the loop formed at the front, adding the dimple and pulling the knot upwards while holding the narrow end to tighten the knot. Insert the narrow end through the keeper loop and check the length. If it lands in the middle of the belt line, you nailed it like a boss. Now we've got one of my favorite knots, the bow tie. Bow ties, although not as common as neckties, are just as formal and can be worn in any situation that you're required to wear a necktie. And in fact, a bow tie, when made from solid black material, is more formal than any necktie and is required for wear with a tuxedo, aka black tie. Now you're gonna see pre-tied bow ties out there. I advise you to avoid them. Any man that's worth his salt knows how to tie a bow tie and they look so much better. A regular tied bow tie is gonna actually be able to have some natural movement to it. Now, a lot of guys think that tying a bow tie is for some reason difficult, more difficult than tying a necktie. That's not the case. And I'm gonna make this easy for you guys. Here is a simple way to tie a bow tie. To tie the knot, make one end slightly longer than the other. Cross the longer end over the shorter end. Now take the long end behind and under and through the neck opening and pull it tight. Fold the short end and bring it over to form the bow tie shape. Take the long end again and drape it down over the top. Bring the two ends of the bow tie and you should notice a hole is formed in the back. Take the long end, fold it and place it through that hole. So at this point, you've got a messy bow tie. Let's fix it, let's dress it up, let's finish this. Pull the non-folded ends to loosen up the knot a bit and then pull the folded end to tighten it again. Keep going back and forth until you're satisfied with the look. Congratulations, you just tied a bow tie. So what video to watch next? Check out this one. I'm gonna teach you all about dress codes so that you understand when to wear each type of tie. The link to this video, down in the description, along with tons of other great resources you'll find over at realmenrealstyle.com.